Hey, check this out. Celestron Nexstar 8SE. I've owned this for two years and I'd like to share some of my thoughts about it. Now, I grew up watching Carl Sagan Cosmos and I got so inspired, I joined the astronomy club in seventh grade. And I can't forget seeing Saturn for the first time in an amateur telescope. Now, I've never owned a telescope, but after watching Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson in 2014, it inspired me to look at buying this toy. Granted, this toy will enrich your life if you're one to appreciate it. A telescope is not for everyone. In fact, it's not for most people. Even my wife, who does appreciate looking at the night sky for the first time looking at Andromeda Galaxy, said, oh, I think I see a smudge. So obviously you're not going to see the same quality images as the Hubble telescope. But my objective is to see the objects for themselves and to know that the photons from Andromeda Galaxy traveled two and a half million years through the universe from one galaxy to another through this telescope, through the eyepiece to my own eyeball. Simply amazing. Let's be honest, you can't use a telescope that often. Obviously, you can't use it during the day. I mean, you could look at the mountains and all, but you're not looking at the night sky. You can't use it if you don't want to stay up late or get up super early. You can't use it if the skies are cloudy, which happens quite often, as I've found out. You can't use it if you're blocked by trees. You can't use it if you're busy at work and don't have the time and energy to set everything up. Now, even when you want to use it and the skies are clear and you take everything outside, perhaps the moon is full and it's like a street light blocking out a lot of the deep sky objects. So realistically, 99% of the time, your telescope is going to be in storage. If you want a telescope, perhaps start with binoculars. There's a lot you can see. Orion Nebula, simply fantastic. Same with Andromeda Galaxy. And the Pleiades cluster is even better with binoculars than a telescope because you get the wider field of view. Now, if you do decide to buy a telescope, that is an expensive decision. Altogether, I probably spent $1,700 on this setup. I spent $1,200 on the scope and about $500 on accessories, most of which I spent on Amazon.com. I looked at other manufacturers, Mead and Orion. You know, it's hard to go wrong with any of them, but I simply like the Celestron. Now, I looked at other styles of telescope, and the Dobsonian uh, is a really good bang for the buck, but it's kind of bulky, and I do uh, bring the telescope camping, so I wanted something that was a little more compact than a Dobsonian setup. Now, in terms of aperture, this scope you can buy in a 4, 5, 6, or 8-inch aperture. Now, the 8-inch obviously lets in more light. It's a big light bucket, and that's what I was looking for. I was looking for a maximum quality view and still having some portability. Now, the 8-inch is uh, more bulky and more difficult to find a case than compared to the smaller scopes. Any of the smaller four or five or six inch scopes fit in a Pelican case or Celestron made cases uh, much easier than this scope. I ended up using uh, something I've made, uh, bought at Home Depot for storage right now. But I used the cardboard boxes for about a year and they're still holding up. And um, I imagine there are many people who have the 8SE who use the cardboard boxes for storage. So before we get into setting up the telescope, I want to talk about accessories. So power is one of the most important things with this telescope. You cannot point it at anything without having power. That's one of the things that the Evolution 8 has added, that you can manually slew the telescope without having power. Now, I do put batteries in this. It's eight AA batteries, and it goes through them very quickly. So you really have to have power attached to the external port. So you have a couple different options here. When I'm camping, one of the most easy things to do is to get the 12 volt adapter and probably a 12 volt extension cord as well. And I just run it from my cigarette lighter to the telescope. It works great. It works way better than the AA batteries in the telescope. Now, 
Um, after using this a while and taking it camping, I decided to get the Yeti 400. This is a great power device. I charge it via solar when we're camping and it runs this telescope all week long when we're out in the Utah desert. Um, when I bought this telescope, I did buy the um, Celestron uh, lens kit. It comes with a bunch of different lenses, a bunch of different filters, and I really don't use this. I would not recommend buying it. In fact, um, the only two things I use out of the Celestron lens kit is the neutral density filter when I'm looking at the moon and the 32 millimeter wide angle lens, which is helpful when you're just kind of getting a wide view of the sky. So all the close-up lenses, I'd prefer to use the Bader Zoom. This is um, about $300, but it's uh, worth it. So it's double the cost of this, but then you, I'm so used to with photography, I can zoom in and out. And that's what this lens gives me, is the ability to start wide, find what I'm looking at, and then zoom in. It's simply more uh, convenient um, than changing a bunch of lenses that are included in the Celestron kit. Now the finder that comes with the telescope will get the job done, but this Telerad finder for $40 is worth every penny. Um, the batteries last forever. It's got a much wider view of the sky and I just find it um, great. Um, it sticks on with double stick tape. It's very easy to remove. I do take it off when I'm storing the scope, but the Telerad finder is a must have accessory. Now, the GPS unit that I've added is a nice feature. Um, it allows you to save a lot of time entering the time and location. Um, so that for $180 is kind of pricey, but I do recommend it. Now, on the other hand, the Wi-Fi unit, uh, this costs $90, and this plugs into the GPS unit that then plugs into the, the base station. This Wi-Fi does work, but I don't like it. Um, I would not I would not buy this again. Um, now the Evolution 8 includes Wi-Fi and I'm, I'm not sure if they improved it, but quite frankly, once you learn the night sky and have a good plan, it's almost easier to use the keypad and just type in Messier 31 if you'd like. Now before you take your telescope outside, you need to have a plan. It's best to sit down and open up some software and try to take a look at what's going to be visible that evening, especially in the area of the sky that you have clear. It's also a good idea to know your constellations and also know how they point to other objects in the sky, such as the Big Dipper pointing to Polaris or arcing to Arcturus. Know that Cassiopeia and Pegasus both point to the Andromeda galaxy. In the Hercules cluster is obviously in the Hercules constellation. Orion Nebula is easily found in the sword of the Orion constellation. There is a sky tour feature in the Celestron 8SE, but I find that it jumps all around the sky, and I'd rather have the telescope go in small increments as I'm looking at items in the sky. Now, I do like to write it down, sit down before it's dark, and make a list. So for alignment, I use the two-star auto align. Now with the GPS entry, it makes it very easy. I don't have to enter the time and location every single time. It does take a couple minutes for it to lock on to the GPS, but I do recommend this accessory. So what I typically do is I start with Polaris. I have a clear view of the North Star. So I point the telescope scope to Polaris and then it automatically will pick another bright star or give me a list. So if I'm looking on Sky Safari first before I go outside, I know what other bright stars are going to be visible at that time. Pick two stars and it does do a pretty good uh, alignment. Now when I'm viewing, I start with a wider eyepiece. 32 millimeter is great or the widest setting 24 on this Bader eyepiece is a good starting point. I uh, will try to go to the object uh, on my list. I've written it down on a piece of paper and I'll just type to type it into the menu, go to that object. If you're tracking something, um, I've done this mistake myself. I was tracking an object and then I went to sleep 
thinking I would wake up early in the morning and take another look, but I never did. And as it was turning and tracking the cluster that I was tracking, um, the power jack cord was um, bent, basically. It's got decently strong motors, so you do want to turn off the scope when it's not attended. You ideally want to bring it in at night after you've done your observing. So what are my favorites? I really do enjoy it studying some of the planets. Of course, it depends on what time of year and your location, what you can see. But Saturn, Jupiter, of course, are some of my favorites. Seeing the moons of Jupiter is simply amazing. Venus, you can see the phases. Other favorites of mine include the Orion Nebula, the Hercules Cluster, the Rose Cluster, the Swan Nebula, and of course, the Andromeda Galaxy M31. Observing the night sky with the Celestron Nexstar 8SE has truly enriched my life. But any telescope could do that, not necessarily this one. It's kind of like seeing art in a museum. It's temporary and very fleeting experience. If you do decide to buy a telescope, the Celestron Nexstar 8SE or any other telescope, I do wish you success in clear skies. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up.